Hello, hello. We will start our session in a few minutes. Just waiting for more attendees to dial in. Okay, we have people from Romania and Malaysia. Where else? Peru, UK, Colombia, Germany, Netherlands. Wow, such an amazing international crowd. Argentina, what time is it over there, guys? India, Indonesia, Poland, Greece, Hungary. Super cool. Seven AM to eleven PM. Okay, we have a lot of people in the room. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Comic Week on this lovely morning, afternoon, evening, for all types of daytimes depending on where you are. Thank you for joining us today on the fourth and final day of our online comics and creativity event brought to you by Wacom and Clip Studio Paint. We have a great session waiting for you today with the exceptionally talented Miuli. But before we jump into the presentation, let me share with you some of the basic rules, nothing too fancy, nothing too harsh, just some quick reminders. The session is going to last roughly one hour and we will have time to answer your questions you might have towards the end. With so many of you in the room, we probably won't be able to answer all of them, but we will do our best, we promise. Please use the Q&A function of Zoom for your questions to our presenter and about the present content. For technical issues, like the screen share not functioning properly, or if you are having trouble with the audio, please use the chat box. We are all creatives and enthusiasts of comics and creative arts, so please be kind and do not spam the chat feed. And if you are new to Zoom, please do try out the gallery view and the speaker view settings to find the best viewing experience for yourself. This session is being recorded and it will be available on Wacom YouTube page next week. You will also receive an email, email with links, additional information and some special offers from our sponsor, including a survey link in which if you fill that survey within the two weeks time period, you will have a chance to win one of the 100 Clip Studio Paint Pro three, three month license keys. So it's a great opportunity, don't miss out that email. Who are we, your hosts? For those of you who don't know Wacom, we've been around for roughly 40 years and we are pioneers of digital pen input technology, which means every time you need to work or create on a computer and realize that the mouse or the trackpad is not going to do the job, you just need to switch to a Wacom tablet and grab that pen. And the rest of you who know us, it's so nice to see you all here again. And this session is brought to you by Clip Studio Paint and for the introduction, I will let Joanna. Thank you very much. We're super excited to be here again for this event. And for those of you who don't know Club Studio Paint yet, um, Club Studio Paint is versatile graphic software best suited for drawing and painting to create a wide range of content. With a wealth of unique features, it helps to create anything from illustrations over comics to concept art and animation. No matter if professional or hobbyist, Club Studio Paint's natural drawing feel along with its comic features is loved by artists from around the world. Looking forward to the session. Thank you, Joanna. 
Um, before going to the session, one last slide. It's the advertising slot. So we have an amazing offer for you all by visiting our eStore page, eStore.wacom.com slash comic week. And now is a great time to screenshot that page, screenshot the screen so you can uh, come back and visit the link. You can discover the full range of our ex exclusive offers for those of you who attend the comic week. A wide range of Wacom products, including Wacom Cintiq Pros, Wacom Cintiq, Intus Pro and Mobile Studio Pros are waiting for you with up to 20% discount. Now the long awaited moment, time to start. <laughs> to have, tonight, today we have Mili with us. She is an Euro European comic writer and artist who studied animation. She has been drawing webcomics since 2009 and her tools of trade are Wacom Cintiq Pro 16 and Eclipse Studio Paint. And without further ado, I will let Mili to start her presentation. And Mili, you can start sharing your screen whenever you want. Thank you. I'm not super sure how, but <laughs> thank you so much for coming to this webinar. I hope I can figure this out. So uh, I saw a lot of people who don't know who I am. So I hope I'll be able to give you an introduction because yeah, as has already been said, I'm a comic artist. I do web comics and illustrations sometimes. I have recently been doing a lot of art tips that have been published this year. And today I want to talk about how I approach uh, character design, how I create my characters, where I get ideas from, and hopefully also give you some ideas for your own characters. And before I start, uh, I wanted to tell you about the wonderful poll we have. <laughs> we have uh, for you, um, it's, it has three questions uh, about a character potentially that I want to design uh, at the end of this session. So if I'm this... finding it up now. Yes, thank you. And while, while everyone is deciding on their pick, I'll try to get the screen share to work. Okay, does it work? Do you see my screen? Yes, it works. Crystal awesome. clear. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So take a time. Take a minute to decide on the poll questions. I also talk a little bit about why I'm doing. I like to do polls and all that stuff. Okay. So while you are deciding, I want to talk a little bit about my work. I'm not sure if you know everything that I'm going to show you but um, yeah I'm basically I'm doing I've started doing self-published comic short comics and uh, web comics a while ago and well how I became an artist maybe is a good place to start it's um, well I've always been drawing like from kindergarten age on I always like to draw I forced my mother to you know draw stick figures and then I copied them uh, so basically none of my family was an artist. So I kind of, you know, had, didn't really have a, a lot of inspiration as a, as a child from, you know, from, from my family, but they were still very supportive. And then uh, about when I was seven years old, we moved uh, to another country. And so I didn't know the language and I had no way really to communicate there. So uh, kind of art became my only way to communicate. I communicated a lot with you know, other kids my age or like the other kids that were in the home or like people who also moved recently. And I made a lot of friends through art and I also was able to you know, get through school and um, kind of make friends and learn the language until maybe uh, about high school where maybe even middle school when you know, art or drawing become kind of less cool. And uh, I started to kind of look elsewhere uh, where to find you know, like-minded people. And that's kind of roughly when I started to upload my art on the internet. So um, I started to share my art and I started to kind of communicate that way because I'm not very good at you know using words. So I always kind of prefer to use images and my, my art to communicate with. So after high school, I knew I wanted to do art, but I wasn't really sure what direction, which I think is kind of common at that age. So I wasn't sure if I would want to go into animation, into game design, into comics. So I 
after high school, I studied animation and then I procrastinated a lot by drawing comics. And the one you see right now on the screen is one I have drawn uh, while you know I didn't do my homework. So not recommended, but that's kind of how it was born and how I was, how I noticed that instead of animation, I still, I want, I would rather do comics. So when I finished university, I knew that I wanted to only do comics basically. And that was the time when I moved again. Back then I moved to Japan because I really liked the market, the culture, and I moved there to learn the language, to attend conventions, to meet again, new people through my art and maybe even, you know, talk to publishers and all that stuff. Right now I am currently living in Germany again. Um, yeah, my tools of trade, as you can see, are uh, the Cintiq 16 Pro. Before that, like, I think my first tablet was 13 years ago. I used the Intuos 3, like way, way back uh, after that. I think seven years ago or so, I finally upgraded to uh, a Cintiq. That was what we were using in, uh, in university as well. So I got the Cintiq 13 HD. And this year I upgraded again uh, to this one. And I'm, of course I'm using Clip Studio Paint for almost all my work, like my comics, uh, if it's like print comics or internet comics, everything I need is basically in the program. Okay, so um, this is basically what I kind of started with, this, this short comic, and it became kind of popular. Like people started to kind of notice my social media presence and stuff. And I started to do more like web comics, where I also noticed that in comics in general, there are also very many directions you can go with. And at first I thought I wanted to do more like kind of like children book illustrations, maybe something in that direction with maybe a bit more mature topics. So I was drawing a webcomic called Lost Nightmare for a couple of years until I noticed that hmm, maybe I want to talk to a more like grown up uh, audience, maybe like young adult, because that's also what I generally like to consume myself. So uh, yeah, from then on, I've tried several other ideas and short comics, and not all of them have worked, like most of them haven't really worked that well. Recently, I've also um, started doing the, or starting to try, and try out the Webtoon format, the one, you know, for mobile. I also did it all with uh, Clip Studio Paint. It was a lot of like learning and a lot of fun. So I hope I can do more in that direction in the future. Okay, so I have like some basic general things about how I approach character design. Uh, maybe some things to think about like generally. So when I create a character, when you create a character in general, there's usually a purpose for this character. Like, especially if it's a big production, you have to kind of consider if it's for animation, if it's for games, if it's just for an illustration, if it's for comics with like a tight deadline or a pretty loose deadline. That's kind of how you tend to pick a style that works better in this kind of field. And what I usually go with is uh, a style that works for comics. And I, will, I want to um, kind of get used to a quicker, quicker pace. So I'm, my, my designs are usually kind of geared towards uh, comics with a tight deadline. And it's kind of, what I'm going to talk about. So of course, when you design characters, there's, there are a lot of things to think about. For example, you have to think about the shapes and the silhouette. Those have to work. And there are many, many guides how to, how to approach that, what shapes work in, in, like in what context and all that stuff. And you really have to figure out like what, what's working for you what, you, what you like seeing yourself and um, there are also very great other lessons in the webinars in this comic week as well. There are lots of things you can learn about like shape language, all that stuff. There's some, uh, some tips for, uh, for example, for, for posing. You can, uh, for example, the, the direct uh, view, 
is better for uh, if you're designing clothes or if you're just designing generally the, the character without you know you don't want to be distracted by uh, you know the po the post the posture but then again you can also concentrate on the posture then i would kind of recommend to kind of tilt to turn uh, the character a little bit and see what you can do there to make it more appealing it's it depends on what you want to do and what you want to the character where you want to you know who who do you, you want to see it if it's just for yourself it doesn't really matter how you pose it it's just you have to kind of note down information that you need okay next of course you need to design clothes for your character which i'm, I'm going to talk a bit later about how to get ideas uh, but of course when you design clothes you have to think about colors and uh, for example i have like this character who is a witch. So I wanted to go with a bit uh, darker theme, the dark colors, uh, kind of to, you know, to show that witches in my world aren't all, you know, that they are a, bit, a little bit dangerous maybe. But still she has uh, like a puffy white sweater to show that she's kind of cozy. And um, I also gave her accents like a red accent to complement her green eyes or like her green eyes also complement uh, the character's eyes that I'm drawing her with usually who has red eyes. So, you know, I'm kind of thinking about complementary colors, colors that work together. I have a little bit of color harmony here. I, I think I learned it in middle school maybe. And I, I kind of tend only to use complement complementary colors. So I encourage everyone to use, to try out different color combinations and maybe look up some color harmonies and see what works for you. Sometimes, even if you use like color harmonies that should work, they still don't work or the, co the colors kind of compete against each other. They don't really communicate well with each other. And then I would uh, recommend using more grays, like going uh, into a kind of weaker situation so that the colors don't compete. Usually it's better to have uh, some kind of focus, like maybe one color is the one that's kind of the main thing and the others should be a little bit less saturated. Usually when all the colors are less saturated, saturated they don't clash too much because um, the colors are kind of closer together so they communicate better. It's just something to think about, something that I should think about more maybe, <laughs> but I try. Okay, so um, a lot of people ask me how to make their characters more likable. And what my method usually is, is by uh, showing interactions or expressions, like how characters interact with other characters, or uh, what's important to this character, who is important to that character, who do they trust, who do they fear, you know, things like that. Like, who they know from their childhood, how they act towards people they just met. And sometimes um, what makes it especially interesting uh, is if the reactions kind of contrast or if the re reactions are kind of surprising, if they are not the usually what you would think. And then you start thinking about the reasons why this character like didn't didn't do that, but do this. And this is kind of how you create interest and also how you, yourself think more about the character. Um, I have a little kind of concept that I recently learned. It's, um, it was on the Shonen Jump website. They post uh, like blogs, professional blogs with some tips. And I came across this concept of over and gap. Maybe some people have heard of like gap moe. It's basically that. <laughs> so over means uh, you have a character with for example, specific interest. Here I have an example where the character just likes dogs. So, I mean, who doesn't, I mean, there are people who don't, but usually there are a lot of people who do like dogs. So it's nothing too special, but then you can exaggerate that interest. You can make him like crazy about dogs. You want to pet all the dogs. He gets like, he gets totally into, you know, petting all dogs. <laughs> that already creates a bit more interest. It's only an example. It can be really literally anything. Or you can go the other direction and create a contrast between the looks of the character or how they usually act and their interest or their reaction to something and create like this gap character. For example, here I have this um, kind of menacing looking guy, kind of angry, who is actually maybe 
really kind who is really nice to cats. It's it's something generic, but I thought it would work for the explanation. I really recommend trying those concepts out for your own characters because it's really fun and you see that a lot. All right. I also have some notes on like how to create more interesting faces. And the webinar before me with Mitch was actually really great at explaining how you should approach that. And I'm still not as that great with that. So I recommend watching his webinar. And, you know, I try to kind of practice creating a bit more variety in both like body shapes and uh, face shapes. I'm still working on that, so forgive me. <laughs> All right, so uh, I want to talk a little bit about where to get ideas from, how, how to get inspired. And I think it's different for everyone, but I want to share some of my inspiration. So maybe it can give you ideas where to look next time maybe, or it's it, maybe it's totally irrelevant to your process, but still. I hope it's kind of interesting. So for character design, I recommend looking at character design, <laughs> especially at like character design that you like yourself, that you like don't, I mean, you can, of course, you should look at as much as possible, but then you should really think about what works for you and yourself and what you want to kind of implement into your own art and, uh, it can be from like vastly different genres, vastly different uh, sources, basically. But I think like usually you kind of start to, to have like preferences. You see that you have influence from that direction or that direction. And uh, I personally, I really like to, to look at uh, animation character designs. Um, I also, sometimes I collect like books like these from like, uh, uh, character designs from from different series, animation series, which is like really interesting. It also has lots of sketches and some interviews. I really recommend like looking out for that. I'm sorry if you can't see that well. Um, yeah, and also like even if you see something like a series that you like, and then you can kind of look at the characters and why you like them and how they work for you and what's visually interesting to you. I kind of really like to get inspired. And it usually it's not like the whole design that I like, but maybe one or two things that I want to implement into my own art. So it's like, you don't copy the whole design. You just try to figure out what works for you or what works in general. And there's also like many uh, sources. You don't have to go into animation. You can look at, you know, comic books or like manga and, uh, you know, there are a lot of artists that are especially great at like designing, like in, in my opinion, like Eiichiro Oda is like amazing at designing characters. And I love it when he like draws them in a different age. And it's like so inspiring to see how different the characters are. Or uh, Akira Toriyama is amazing at like, you know, designing, especially his um, like game designs are amazing and really, really inspiring in my opinion. It can be something completely different for you but these are some examples of what I find inspiring. Also, there are um, uh, sometimes there are like different approaches to the costumes or to the character design. That's also very, very interesting. And sometimes you see yourself like preferring maybe some older or some alternative concepts. And then you can you know, think about like how you would, it, would implement it into your own work and which design you would have rather gone with kind of like that, it's always like a conversation with yourself. And so you can do the same for uh, clothes. You can see how other artists design clothes. I think it's especially interesting in like game design, how game artists design clothes. And of course I do, I like to do, to, to draw interactions or design a cast of characters. So it's also a good idea to look at other casts of characters now come uh, some cast of characters that I personally like. It's a little bit embarrassing, but I hope other people share my love for these <laughs> characters. It's, you can kind of look at why these characters work well together. It's, it's often something very personal, like what kind of interaction you like, what kind of characters you like to see together, what kind of works for you. And even, you know, sometimes some things worked like 10 years ago, but now they might have changed. Maybe you have developed your own style. Sometimes the things 
are like the same as great as ever. And then you, you know, you realize that your change maybe hasn't, your style, your taste hasn't maybe changed all that much. And, you know, you get all the inspiration from all these different types of uh, sources. Um, also, all like how, how the background of the characters is explained, how their childhood is often, you know, indicated, everything like that. Another source of inspiration for me is uh, going to museums. And I have some photos I took in different kinds of museums. This one was uh, a toy museum in Totori. Uh, I really like this, uh, this little ch the children book illustration. It was just you know some some rabbits. I really like the line work and you know the colors. It was very simple. I really really liked that one. I felt it kind of inspiring. This one was kind of amazing to me. <laughs> this is from uh, the Tezuka Museum in Takarazuka, uh, and it was. It's, it's like a star directory for his characters because his characters, apparently they reappeared in his stories like, like actors that he would just recast. And I thought it was such an amazing idea for your own kind of story. Sometimes it's like an amazing idea to just explain the same face syndrome. You know, you can just say, oh, it's just the same actor. <laughs> I just thought it was very, very interesting. Uh, then I went to the uh, Sand Museum in Totori. There was like uh, each year there's a different topic where like lots of artists from around the world go and build these amazing sculptures of um, sand. And it's kind of really amazing to see what everyone comes up with and how it looks in a different medium. And I don't know, the thing that inspired me the most for some reason was this really cute crying monkey hugging a crying cat. It was, it was just, <laughs> it was like my favorite thing. Amazing. It just sometimes like little small things that can just, you know, give you a spark of inspiration. So if you have like different kinds of interests, I really encourage you to go into museums and see, you know, what you can learn maybe about the artists or what else you can see. Or sometimes you can even just go out if it's you know possible <laughs> this is um, a statue from uh, Nuremberg I saw which was it, I know it just it just really fascinated me it was so interesting and sometimes even that can like inspire you to, to to get ideas to draw something maybe in like a different direction or even even like sketches like like this I went to um, a fencing class or it was like Hema like a historic European martial arts class and there were like a lot of books about um, you know about you know medieval wrestling or sword fighting or even like sketches of uh, just clothes of you know medieval clothes it can be really inspiring it's good to have inspiration directly from life and history to give you know your designs some kind of believability even though I really encourage you to also look at you know games and animation and movies but it's still, you know, real life sometimes have has like even crazier ideas that you maybe didn't even think of. And what else I really encourage you to look at is cosplayers, because cosplayers have so many like interesting and unique ideas how to approach a character, how maybe to twist the design a little bit, how to make it work, how to make it more realistic, maybe. It's like so inspiring just to see how like real people interpret some you know designs from animation or you know from drawings basically so i really like encourage to encourage you to look at like real life references or even like you no know, cosplay that's are kind of taking from fantasy and putting it into real life and of course i mentioned before but movies is like a huge inspiration to me and it's, it's kind of a different medium from like comics. So it has different, it has some different rules and some different languages. So I really encourage you to kind of check out more, uh, like more stuff that might interest you. Some things, maybe you, you don't like movies. So I would say like, you don't have to force yourself. Like this movie, for example, it's a really old movie by Kurosawa. It's um, I think The Hidden Fortress. And I really liked the interaction between those two characters, really inspired me. And like, I really tried to 
kind of analyze it to remember to note it down and what exactly worked between those characters for me what I liked about them things like that then of course you have like fashion you can look at for example look at different magazines like fashion magazines like fruits it has like a lot of Harajuku street fashion uh, that you can you know just flip through and see maybe new inspiring ideas inspiring combinations it also depends really on your fashion sense or on the fashion sense of your character maybe maybe it's something that you would never like wear yourself but you have a character that's kind of wearing that so you can you know you can branch out and see different kinds of you know magazines and gothic lolita for example is also the bible is also um really like a favorite of mine that i really like to flip through it has a lot of really interesting ideas and color schemes and you can also like tone it down it doesn't have to be like the style it can just be you know this dress or this pattern or something that really inspires you it can also be uh, from like illustrated magazines like really old ones like uh, what i find personally very inspiring for example these from like the roaring 20s um and of course last thing that I wanted to mention that is very inspiring apart from all that is just the people maybe around you like the people you see on the street or even like if you if you can't go outside because you know of reasons then I also encourage you to just you know look at different celebrities maybe musicians I know that you know the k-pop fandom finds a lot of inspiration in this in these things or you know different kinds of music genres you can really you know go crazy with whatever you, you know you're in where wherever your interest lies i have like a little image that i found so amazing because the contrast was really great just wanted to quickly share <laughs> i thought it was kind of the, the contrast between those two was so amazing and I, i'm still very inspired by this i still kind of try to think of contrast like that like friendship dynamic goals for me so, okay, uh, now I want to talk a little bit about how I created these two characters specifically, a little bit like a history lesson. And we'll be, after that, we will look, uh, we will look at the, the, poll, the poll results and, you know, see if I can do anything with that. So uh, these two, I don't know if anyone is familiar with them, but it's a, it's a witch called Morgana and a vampire called Oz that I've been kind of working with for like two years, kind of like, you know, playing around with, I've usually done different things, but they have been reoccurring. It started with this sketch. It was like two years ago, around like September, it was kind of already like Halloween time. And I remember that I kind of fell sick back then. I had a cold two years ago and I started, you know, I was like in bed for like two weeks and started to like read anything that you know feel good things like romance comics and stuff and then I just wanted you know to draw something like feel good myself basically it was like it has not really no super deep meaning behind it but it just you know it was Halloween time I wanted to draw something cute something that you know, feel good so I draw I drew like this tall witch and her vampire boyfriend and like, to my surprise people actually really enjoyed that and that kind of encouraged me a lot to just keep on drawing and, you know, to explore these two a little bit more. And of course, these two were just, you know, at this point, they, were, they weren't really characters. And I thought what would make them a bit more real would be names. So some people also asked how I come up with names. And it might be a little bit of cheating, but I usually just ask like my audience I put up a post and ask, what do you think, what names would fit these characters? And uh, a lot of really good ideas. I mean, I'm, I'm really blessed to have audience that interacts and gives me ideas. I know that it's like not, not a given and I'm really, really thankful that people, you know, are willing to, you know, give me suggestions. So I usually, I see what people respond to well. Maybe they all only have like um, a general idea, like this character, sounds like it has you know an r sounding name or an m sounding name some give me specific name ideas and then usually i go and like check the origin of this name 
know, the meanings, maybe alternative writings, maybe you know some different kind of versions of the name. And then I usually end up with some names, like three names that I really like. And then again, I ask my audience, like usually with polls, that's why we are doing you know, polls. Right? I ask like, which name would you, out of those three, which one would you like best? And it's, it's, it's really amazing how, how much people want to kind of engage and to have a say in that. It's like a lot of fun to me. Sometimes it's a bit uh, like troubling when people just like I myself really can't decide. <laughs> and it's like 30% for every possible answer. And like, <laughs> then of course I have to finally say, and then I have to think of the characters and, you know, so these were some of the names that I had kind of pick, picked out. And in the end, uh, I decided on Morgana and Oz. And I used other, the other names for different characters. And then of course, if you do have, when you do have characters and you do have names for them, it's you don't really have to stick with their design. You can still experiment and see like what works, what doesn't. For example, I had this idea to have like a tall witch girl with a vampire boy, or I thought maybe people would like it even more if it was like a tall vampire girl with a witch boy. And I you know, asked again my audience, like, what do they think? Like what, what is more appealing to them? And I mean, a lot of people are just really nice and say they like both, which is amazing. <laughs> but usually you do see kind of a preference for something and then you yourself can decide if you share the same preference or if you can like see what other people see or just, you know, you can stick with whatever you think is best, but it's just collecting data. And, you know, if you want to have a conversation with your audience, you can, it's, it's, I really encourage to ask. I even asked, like I have a cat in my story and I asked which style of drawing the cat people would encourage. And it got like, I got a lot of responses to that, which really surprised me again. And I think I'm going with one and five, I think, just so you know. <laughs> then I just kept drawing these characters, like kept thinking of different, uh, like, scenes for them, different scenarios, like things. Usually like I, I really like to see backgrounds, but I end up just drawing characters because I just, I love drawing characters. And then the background is in my mind, but sometimes it really doesn't make it to paper. Unfortunately, I'm trying to work in that. <laughs> then also you can uh, see what the character is like wearing when they're like sleeping or, you know, experiment and it's kind of like an exploration of the characters you're trying to you know you're trying to yourself to know the character better and for me I usually explore characters visually like I know a lot of people like to explore characters by writing and they you know they write a lot about the characters for me it's like all visual I really like to you know from the visuals come usually like the story for me and I get a lot of more ideas when I draw, when I see. And for like all my characters, I usually, I like to experiment with and put them in different clothes or, you know, even like try clothes they might not usually wear, like formal wear, which is also, I find that the audience also enjoys usually seeing them in different. Sometimes it's, it might even be that another outfit fits your character better. Sometimes, you know, you just stick to one character outfit and it really depends on ultimately if it's like a self-indulgent project if it's self like self-owned created um comic then you have a lot of you know final say and your art director is basically the audience so you communicate more with the audience which i personally like and that's kind of what i'm i ended up doing most another thing that i already mentioned like and you can imagine interactions of your characters, you can imagine how they interact, you know, with each other or maybe even like with the family. That's a lot of interesting ideas and you can just, you know, kind of play the what if game. At first I thought, okay, I have this vampire. What is, does this vampire family look like? But then I thought maybe his family isn't a vampire family. Maybe his family is 
werewolf family, werewolf human family. Maybe he is adopted into a werewolf human family. And then I like this idea. So, you know, I draw it out and then I post it. And then some other people seem to enjoy this idea as well. So I feel like courage and I'm like, yeah, okay, then this is something we can work with. So, you know, I create uh, the other like families for the, my other uh, characters. They usually they don't, when I create a character family, is usually not the first thing that I come up with. It's like a whole process of um, just exploring and getting to know your character, who they are, like, who they like, where they come from. It's for me at least. It's a lot of fun, and it's a lot of fun to share with your audience. That's kind of why I also really enjoy doing what I'm doing because I know that uh, a lot of the like, big productions there's also like so much creative work behind the scenes that the audience sometimes even doesn't get to see or gets to see like two or three years after the work has been done and for, like, for me I enjoy it a lot when I can actually like do so like get instant feedback that's why I have kind of realized maybe around university that uh, working like in big groups and teams it's probably not for me because I really like to have as much like say in my story as possible and you know get to know the characters on my own terms and then you know share them with my audience and see you know how they react to things and you know this is kind of how they developed the audience also gives you really interesting ideas sometimes they ask interesting questions I recently just decided on like sure names for my characters or specific heights for the characters and like with each sketch with each drawing with each you know exploration they become more real to you and more real to your audience and I mean you can just leave it at that basically but you know I plan to do I definitely plan to do uh, comics with my characters and I'm working on that <laughs> it's it's taking a lot of time because I'm still like exploring and I'm posting more characters and you know I wanted to mention that not all character designs work equally. Some work, some don't. And, you know, I usually don't feel discouraged. I just, you know, see if I can find a reason why they didn't work or, you know, I can try again, or maybe the characters. Usually like I don't need to draw a character over and over again. Once I've drawn them, they're kind of out of my mind. Maybe I've written a script for them. They do have kind of their own story. And if they don't do well, then, you know, I know that it's not what people want to see. So, you know, I, I'm already kind of, I have it out of my system so I can move on to the next thing. And sometimes things stick to the audience. And then I think maybe it's, you know, it would be interesting to explore the character more. So, you know, I go more into detail and see you know, how people react to that. It's sometimes if you do have, uh, if you upload your things on social media, uh, and you try to change it afterwards, it can be a bit um, harsh on your audience who already likes like the original designs. Like with these two, I also try to go into a different direction, but people already like them as they are now. So, and you know, I also realized that I, you know, my original idea is what I really liked about them. So, you know, I'm sticking with them like that. So yeah, that's basically my thinking process and how I approach these things. I hope, I hope it wasn't too boring. I hope you got some ideas. I hope, you know, some maybe smart things were in between. So I think this is a good time to look at the poll maybe. <laughs> okay. I'll just, I'll just tell you the results. Yes. Yes. Um, please. I'm, please. <laughs> I'm going to write it down. I hope it's, it's probably the most difficult. It's, oh no. <laughs> it's a girl. Okay. It's a witch. Okay. And she's very happy. <laughs> Isn't this basically my character Morgana? <laughs> yeah, I think I think this poll was rigged, but yes, that's the result. Um so maybe she has a sister? <laughs> actually, actually she only has a brother, but I mean I can I mean there are more witches who are happy and girls <laughs> in my <laughs> in my world. So, alternative universe <laughs> yeah or that or that yeah i mean i usually like i pref i think i draw more uh guy characters than girl characters so it's actually not so bad to draw a girl now it's interesting okay. to see that this is what you know people really want to see from me yeah and yeah i mean actually i uh 
I tried to kind of, because I knew what the poll would look like, I tried to already kind of think of things. And mm. uh, I, I didn't come up with anything really good. But before I was kind of sketching, uh, actually, which character was not really that happy, but I can show you was this one. I was just recently just, you know, sketching because I thought of like, pink hair. I was like, okay, pink hair. What can I do with that? <laughs> <laughs> it's basically, I mean, maybe she's happy. <laughs> she's probably <laughs> happy. <laughs> I mean, I have, yeah, this is basically like the character. Uh, I can show you like the sketch that I had. This is like the sketch, really quick sketch that I, a quick, quick idea that I had. And then I also had like the idea for colors like i already have like my witches in my world are uh have some kind of like uniform so it's always kind of black so i thought i can go crazy with the hair color that's why i kind of went with pink and then from there i was kind of starting to think what kind of people around like are around this character so you know i thought this character looks kind of not as you know maybe a little bit you know dangerous not just you know innocent so I thought maybe someone who is innocent would be really cute so you know I was kind of here just you know experimenting I'm not too happy with the result yet so you know I'm still kind of experimenting and seeing how these kind of things work but yeah I can also try to do another girl witch character who's happy I have I prepared like a little bit of um, uh, basis which I usually don't do but I thought since maybe we don't have time, but we do have some time. So I don't need to use them, but I can try to use, for example, this one. This is like the happiest post mm. around here. So, okay, we have like a witch, a happy witch. Witches are in my world usually have like this big head. This is going to be really rough and I'm trying to kind of think of something while I draw. Um, so yeah, this is basically, this, that's it. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I think you okay. might get, we, we might get protests if you, if you stop right there. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's all in the head. <laughs> no, but it's, it, does, it doesn't have to be, of course. I mean, the head is usually like, you know, the most typical thing and what I like to stick with for my characters. So since it's a happy witch, mm, I mean, I have, I have like my, the, the uniform for my characters are, you know, this, this, uh, this red ribbon and this dress, uh, dress shirt. So I guess that's what she's wearing. But then again, people also like to kind of do interesting things with uniforms or like, you know, adjust them. So yeah. I don't know, maybe she has her sleeves rolled up that could already you know, indicate it, you know, she's a bit more open you know likes to have fun maybe and then it doesn't really matter what they wear like if they wear uh, a skirt or maybe this one doesn't wear a skirt maybe this happy witch wears wears i don't know shorts <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of interesting this kind of looks like a summer witch also in my in my universe i divided the witch witches between like summer witches winter witches autumn witches spring witches oh. so this could be like either a spring witch or a summer witch maybe she doesn't even have shoes that, that's actually pretty interesting <laughs> and then we have we have the hair it's kind of that's always interesting what should i do with the hair mm -hmm -hmm. Something I haven't maybe drawn before. Maybe short hair. I don't draw short hair very often. So maybe... Well, it makes sense for a summer witch. Yeah, right? It's not getting too too hot in summer. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know, maybe, maybe this length or maybe even shorter. Maybe she's like this. This is a cute hairstyle. So usually when I like start designing a character, when I have like a rough idea, like now, like a girl, which happy girl, which character, I usually start to just go into my like inspiration folder or like see other witches and see, you know, just trying to get visual information because mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't, I don't know if maybe, maybe other people, uh, other people's brains can store all the information, but mine really cannot. <laughs> I, I have to, you know, look out uh, for other sources and you know see you know what what sparks kind of interest what i usually like it's not like i don't try to look for what's popular or anything but 
kind of what's what inspires me hmm. or what I maybe haven't thought of before you know yeah. we had a question regarding that like yes. when creating and when creating characters and looking at references um how do you avoid um getting too close to something that already exists mm. like with the fear of pra plagiarism mm. uh, you just take over too much of the references you have mm. yeah yeah that's well that's difficult because for me i like to keep my designs very fairly simple mm. so usually when they are simple there's there's like tons of others kind of similar even like people that exist like that and i think what a good way to just even if you're like not aware of it, what a good way to check is, is is maybe to like upload it on social media. And then, you know, you always get, you know, just comments that this looks like this character, this looks like this celebrity. And if it's, if it gets too much, like, you know, if it's like, this is, this looks like this character and it's like half your comments or maybe more than, then you start thinking that, okay, maybe I should change some things, <laughs> even though it was like <laughs> not your intention because it just, it happens. And usually when you, do look for inspiration like I encourage not to take like the whole design but just you know to pick mm. small things that you like and you know it's kind of on social media you kind of you check you you brace yourself for you know for comments that accuse mm. you of stealing and then you're like okay <laughs> <laughs> I, I can work with that I can try to avoid it next time <laughs> what do you usually um create first like what what springs to your mind first when you think of a character or when you have a character mm. idea yeah that's sometimes it's it's different each time but i usually like i'm a highly visual person so i usually mm. have some kind of uh like picture image in my head or sometimes it's even just a scene sometimes it's you know something visual so usually it starts with something something visual but as soon as i kind of start to draw it start you know to bring it on on the screen then I kind of, I start to, it, it's, it, it looks like a person. Then I kind of get curious, oh, what's this person like? And sometimes it's always already reflected in the clothes or in the expression. Like for example, um, when I was preparing for the webinar, I also was kind of worried that, you know, uh, I always draw witches and werewolves and, you know, vampires. And I was kind of, starting to get like a bit worried that people might you know get bored with that so I thought maybe how about I just you know put these types of characters into a different setting so I started to think of like maybe they're like cyberpunk which is cyberpunk vampires so I kind of before that as a warm-up I kind of you know just sketched random maybe like possibly cyberpunk-ish kind of characters this is like a vampire who would uh you know kind of hide his fangs under a mask or mm. something like that and then you know I just picked random colors like it, it, first I had like a visual idea then I started to draw it and now I'm kind of curious so what's the character like who are his friends I mean, where does he come from and I also sketched a little bit what what I imagine it maybe a werewolf could look like maybe you know cybernetic <laughs> werewolf thing and maybe the witches of this world are I don't know like mad scientists who do like I don't know <laughs> It's like it can go in any direction so I was already kind of you know this is what I was sketching before we went mm -hmm. live kind of so yeah. in, in, in case I would like totally fail right now <laughs> <laughs> it seems like cybernetic werewolves are a bit overpowered <laughs> yeah but, well, I know, maybe. but, you, but you it don't... could be interesting if you Right? Definitely. Yeah. and you don't know how like the rest of the world looks like because you know oh, after yeah. you have you have the characters you can think of the the yeah. world and decide on the rules and maybe like everyone mm. is has some cybernetic parts and you know yeah yeah things like that you spoke of warm-up uh do you have any drawing exercises you do just to like get into your workflow yes i uh recommend doing like gesture drawings like to kind of get loose there's uh there are like different websites where you can um you know there's like a timer you can like draw a pose like there's a photo and you can draw this pose in like in 30 seconds and 10 seconds and one minute this is usually like to get your hand loose to not you know get obsessed with a pose and this is kind of what i've been doing a lot recently i've been you know trying to get more loose so these kind of gesture drawings sometimes just you know gesture drawings of faces or like heads can help or like drapery anything but you know just lose usually lose lose things yeah. Hmm. Um, and 
gesture drawings is a wonderful topic for the next question. Um, do you have any tips on drawing characters consistently mm. from different angles or different situations? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's Especially for comics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Since I, I did, I did pretend to study animation at some point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, I, I got used to, um, to like character sheets where you have like a turnaround of characters. So at first, I was actually like obsessively doing it myself. For every comic, I was drawing um, like character sheets that maybe even didn't need to be as detailed, but it's usually a good idea to have like a grid. Oh, wait, 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 I can, I can like show, you can, or even you can use like in Clip Studio, you have, um, you have this grid here, you can adjust it uh, with the grid ruler settings. You can, you know, I recently I've, I've started to do that a lot with like grids, working with grids just to, you know, not get lost in any specific thing. So, um, whoops. yeah, you you kind of establish a grid and then and then kind of you know try to draw a turnaround. It can be like a turnaround of the face or the whole body, and you kind of try to stay consistent to that grid so that you know the eyes are all on the same level or the mouth is on the same level, kind of like that. And then you do like a turnaround, and it can be like I know that for me it was very hard to do at first. Because like suddenly like my style completely changed once the character was turned. Like who, who who's that? So um, it it kind of you just have to practice doing like turnarounds and then you know drawing bodies from different directions. Maybe even seek help from like three D. Uh, you know, use anything you can. But I really can recommend like grids and turnarounds. And then you get just to get you know used to your character from all the angles. And then at some point, if you do it often and well enough, and you know. You can just, you know, you get used to it, hopefully. <laughs> I'm still hoping. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Is there anything else I can answer? Yes. We have, we have more questions. <laughs> oh, no. Um, <laughs> I, hope, I hope you would say no. Like, no, that's it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I can say no to that. We have still, yes, more questions. Um, okay. You do a lot of character shades and like um, practice, like you show your practicing process with um, without reference and with reference. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. And do you have anything that that's really easy for you and something that's really hard for you when you when you draw the human figure or just characters in general? Yeah, it's usually the thing that I've just practiced has become easy to draw. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing that I haven't practiced in a while, at some point it becomes hard to draw again. <clears throat> so it's kind of, it's it's like every day is a different answer probably. Huh. But yeah, even like faces, I, I always draw faces, but I still feel like I, you know, there are some days where just, how do you, how do you face it? I don't, <laughs> <laughs> so it's really, I mean, if, if you, if you do think that you struggle with the specific part of you know drawing anatomy or anything then you I would encourage you just you know study that for a little bit to get you know to get quick and to you know to quickly figure it out and as you know kind of to just basically practice <laughs> so I because I'm I'm doing it myself like each week I find like oh I forgot how to draw this angle that I've drawn 500 times maybe I should you know study it and draw it another 500 <laughs> So yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I hope you don't mind uh, mind me asking. It's like, what what does a day for you look like right now, mm. as a freelance artist? It's completely and... fine. I actually I do have. It it starts with a routine, <laughs> but it ends with not a routine. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, when I I usually wake up around I don't know like nine nine o'clock, and then I because I'm like allergic to dust. I, every day I just wipe the floor of the whole apartment. It's kind of like my meditation phase, like my waking uh -huh. up phase. It has been like, I've done it over two weeks, two, two weeks, two months. So it, it has become a habit now. And then after that, I usually have breakfast. And then I highly recommend this. Then I work out using the ring fit adventure. <laughs> <laughs> I work out for like, I don't know, 15 minutes or like depending on, you know, how, how, how I feel. 
so because it's really really important for artists you know to keep your body kind of in shape so i really encourage to do anything like i usually i'm i'm pretty lazy i don't like to go to the gym or anything but like the ring fit adventure i don't know what it is but i'm just i'm, I'm doing it every day i love it so much <laughs> so after that i go like shower and then it's it's maybe it's already like 11 11 a.m and then i start drawing so like the first two hours after i wake up are not drawing related but then i just draw until it's time for lunch then i have a break and then i draw again and then it's time for dinner and then after dinner i usually decide if like if, if i've been drawing i've been working all day how I want to spend like my evening. If there's like a deadline, I usually keep working. If there's no deadline, then I have like several options. I can go into like input mode and, you know, just read or play games or, you know, draw for fun before I've been, you know, drawing for work and then it's completely different. <laughs> Do you still feel like drawing for fun even if you've been drawing for work the whole day? Yes, I feel like especially if I've been, if, been, if I've been like drawing for work all day, then like I, I need to draw for fun <laughs> but <laughs> my work is kind of like when I draw comics it's always kind of drawing for fun that's mm. that's usually when I, I feel like okay work has been so much fun I guess now it's time to read or you know do something different <laughs> yeah it's, it's also like it's it's it can be dangerous for your hands so I, I highly encourage to you know listen to your own like body when you when after mm. like a day drawing your hand starts uh, to to hurt so you know you, you have to abort everything and just you know do you know relax your hand maybe do yeah. some more working out with ring fit adventure <laughs> <laughs> um do you think your time in japan has like greatly influenced your style or because yes. you've always been like a bit into <laughs> animation and stuff yeah. so yeah it's 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 an, this is an interesting question because um when I went to university, I was, I think I was kind of going more into like animation, like from the West a little bit, because mm. I, I thought maybe, maybe this is what I wanted to do, like work in animation. So I tried to make my style that could maybe like work a little bit better for Western anime, like Disney animation, maybe something like, but then I realized that I'm forcing myself that, you know, what I'm like, I started to consume more things from Japan. And then like, when I'm consuming things from Japan, then why should I force myself to draw, you know, something that I would not read myself, or, you know, mm. that's kind of in Japan, I noticed that even more because I met a lot of people who said I have a very best West Western style. And mm. that kind of, you know, I, I started to think like, but why though? <laughs> like what, <laughs> what makes my style look, you know, look like that? And, and yeah. I started to kind of analyze styles more and, you know, see, analyze the styles of what I like to draw, uh, of what I like to read or look at myself and then, you know, see if I can implement it in my work more. So I think because all my influences in Japan were like from indie Japanese artists or like from all the, the work that I've seen there. I think I had for one year, I had almost no Western <clears throat> influences. So I do think it greatly influenced my art. So, mm. uh, yeah. Yeah. So let me check. We have more questions. Um, da, 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 da. um so you like to um, create characters in pairs, like yes, Morgana and usually. Oz. Yeah. Um, how do you, how do you decide to, who to put more focus on? Are they equal, or do you like to have like a side character, like one being a side character, one being the main character? Mm -hmm. Like when you think of the story, mm -hmm. how but do you balance? <laughs> that's actually it's, it's a good that's a good comment. Like, do you think of the story? Because usually when I design characters when they don't have a story yet, then they're kind of equal. They're just two people maybe that who I don't really know yet. So they're kind of equal. But once I start to think of their story, then I start, you know, maybe I finally I see that um, this character has a more interesting arc. Maybe they have more interesting development to do. Then this character becomes more of more of a main character, you know, because it, I just like to spend more time with them. And it's, you know, it's you have to see where your own interest li lies kind of and then you kind of focus on them and then you see how the audience reacts and 
I, I used to, like I once I started a comic where I had like four main characters and I realized it didn't quite work the way I intended to. So it's good to have like a focus, especially when you do like comics, when you just design characters, it, you know, as, as long as, you know, don't have a specific use for them. You can also like design side characters, of course. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all, always kind of a process. Yeah. Um, when you have, like, let's say for the characters that didn't work out quite as well, mm-hmm. or have you looked back on your own art, like in your art history of the cre- characters you created, mm-hmm. do you ever come back to a character's character and realize why it didn't work or mm. yeah I like that. feel like maybe like after a few I would say a few years I have like mm. enough distance from this character that I can kind of but maybe even like my own taste might have changed or like I can see it a bit more uh, like objectively Mm-hmm. So sometimes I do I do realize that my, maybe like the colors didn't work out. Maybe in this meantime I've learned a bit more about designing and I've learned a bit more about myself. For example, I, I did actually realize a lot of characters that I'm kind of trying to bring back and why they didn't work before and why they didn't work for me. And it's yeah, it's always kind of you learn a lot about like I, I keep learning about like my characters, my design, my you know, everything. So yeah. Sometimes yeah. You- <laughs> go ahead go ahead no, I just wanted to mention sometimes you don't actually see what's wrong but you know you mm. just know that this character it, you mean it might have been just you know algorithm thing that this character didn't really reach a lot of people so mm. when you try again and it's still nobody's really interested and you know maybe it's just this character might only work in like in a story it might not work as like one picture but I try to you know generate interest with like just one one image so you know it's kind of how you, how you, you know, how you approach that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Did you ever rediscover a character? Yes, <laughs> totally. I mean, there are sometimes there are like characters that I really, really like, but my audience just doesn't care about. So you know, I, I, I want, I really want to make this character work. So I like, I keep trying different things, and then you know, I keep kind of reintroducing the characters, and then sometimes people might react to some reintroductions better than others and then you know that's kind of how we discover usually yeah mm-hmm. um when creating a story be it for a comic or just in your head for the characters you have mm. um what do you think is important for a good story to work for you or to work for your mm. audience mm. oh that's that that goes into writing which i also really 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 like but it's still something that i'm trying to figure out so that yeah. In a good story, it's, I think it's also different for everyone. But for me, like a good story, of course, like my my stories are they live off of the characters. Like I need characters in the story that I care about. If the, if a story, like no matter how interesting it is, if I don't care about the people in in the story, then you know I just it, I don't have anything to work with. Hmm. So I think like characters is the like character interaction, especially how the characters play off of each other, and maybe even like what they how they develop like the character arcs it's kind of what makes story interesting for me and how i want to approach my own story writing i want to be it to be more about characters and their journey yeah okay i think we're coming close to the end now um but for everyone who's been participating in this in the session and for people who would like to start out making comics after seeing this, um, when do you think is a good good point to start making a comic? What, what's <laughs> the prerequisite that you need? Mm, probably a pen. Like a, <laughs> as soon as you have a pen, you can you know, pen and, and maybe paper or you know if you have digital equivalent, just you know start. <laughs> <There's>, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think there's really prerequisite. It's I think it's good. Like the pericus, the you know that thing. Um, <laughs> I think it would be experience. So you have to draw a comic when you have drawn a lot of comics before. So it's kind of you know you need to draw just draw to have to gain this the qualification mm-hmm. to draw a comic because you know I think I think I've I've like my first comic I've probably drawn in like preschool or something, and mm-hmm. I didn't have like any qualifications or like 
you know, I did have a pen and a paper and this was enough to like start gaining experience. And then you do it again and then again, and then you try to figure out what didn't work, why it didn't, you know, just the story, like all my, most of my stories didn't have an ending. So I started to think, oh, maybe there should be a structure. And then you look into a structure and try again. And, you know, it, it also, I would like, suggest that people aren't too precious with their stories that you know just say, oh maybe i'll draw the story when i'm better because that's what i've been thinking but usually like in one or two years you gain so much more inspiration and experience that you will have a completely other story that you want to do so you just you know the one that you have now just you know just get it out and even if it's like if in two years your your skills are way better and you still want to do the same story you can just you know redraw the story or touch it up or you know it's like there's nothing holding you back really okay i think that's that's a really nice and positive note to end on do you so, have anything else to anything else you want to add no i think i think that's <laughs> I, I leave it at that <laughs> you can you can just like really quickly come up with a name for our happy witch girl oh no i need to ask my audience <laughs> please <laughs> <laughs> I'll, maybe okay, i'll okay. I'll, I'll draw her again and maybe I'll po post some variations or maybe I'll yeah. think of some friends and post later on, on social media. So you yeah. might see her again. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I'll, I'll, okay. ask, I'll ask for name suggestions then. <laughs> okay. Very good. Mm. All right. Thank you. Okay. That was really fun and inspiring. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you, Miuli. And thank you, Jonna. Thank you so much. <laughs> So let me share my screen and let's go through the closing slides. And please let me know when you can see the, mm -hmm. the screen. Yes. All right, perfect. Well, thank you all for uh, joining us again today in the second session. Uh, please do go ahead and check and follow us on social media at Wacom and at Clip Studio Official. And while you're at it, obviously you shouldn't forget to follow Miuli on Instagram at Miuli Art. Um, I mentioned that at the beginning, so you can just visit our e-store, e-store.wacom.com slash comic week to see your exclusive offers and save up to 20% on tons of Wacom products. Uh, and as well, next week or in a couple of, couple of days, you will receive an email, a wrap-up email from us, including the YouTube links and the offers from Wacom and Clip Studio Paint, including the survey for Clip Studio Paint, in which you can win one out of the 100 Clip Studio Paint Pro three-month licenses. Otherwise, that will be it from us for this session. Um, again, a awesome. big, big thank you to Miuli and thank Joanna. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, really great. Um, we are not done yet. We have one more session for the European slot of the Wacom Comic Week today. Uh, at 5 p.m. we will have Charlie Adler and we will have an interview and live drawing with him. Awesome. And until then, see you all and bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Uh.